So last time we took a look at the first half of our machine learning fantasy name generator where our computer program reads in a set of names and then creates this probability matrix that gives you the probability of letter I being followed by letter J. And we had a couple of large data sets, one for human names, one for elf names, and it worked out pretty well. Um, by the end, we were pretty satisfied with the uh, with the types of names that are coming out. Today I want to take a look at the second half where we give the computer feedback about the names it generates and it adjusts the probability matrix accordingly. And I want to do this using my favorite fantasy race, the Gripply. The Gripply are these humanoid frog creatures that are good-natured but incredibly xenophobic. Um, and, and you get to play as a small humanoid frog running around with a sword. I mean, what could be more fun than that? And they have these fun um, guttural sounding names like you have here, but there aren't as many Gripply names out there on the internet. So we had 2,000 human names and 1,000 elf names last time. We've only got 15 Gripply names to go with here. In fact, this sample size is so small that it doesn't even have every letter in the alphabet in it. And so in order to accommodate for that, I've had to make a slight change to the name initializer. When we initially normalize the probability matrix, if, there, if the letter doesn't occur at all, then this total on the probability set is going to be zero. So if it's equal to zero, then we're going to just make a uniform probability distribution where each probability is one over uh, 26, one over the number of letters in the alphabet. Uh, if you, we do end up with a total, so if a letter does occur, then we just set this to its usual value of its usual normalized value. But the reason this came up for me is because I was dividing by zero when I got to, for example, Z. There are no Zs in the Gripply names. Now that suggests to me I probably need to adjust the probability of selecting a letter to begin with that, that we shouldn't be getting Zs to begin with, but we'll, well, I'll, I'll work on that in a, in a future installment. So this is the same code, apart from that change, this is the same code we had last time. We're going to uh, start out with zeros and then read in the Gripply names. So let's run this and get our Gripply, there's my division by zero error. Um, oops, I forgot to put Gripply in, uh, Gripply is not defined. Rule Gripply are frogs. There, now I've defined Gripply. Forgot to make that an actual string. There we go, okay, now we run without any errors, thank goodness. So I come back over to my folder and I see the newest file is gripply.csv. So gripply names is a file that has the list of names. Gripply.csv has the probability matrix. And so just based on what we've seen so far, this is going to look very different from our human and elf routines, uh, excuse me, probability matrices. So you notice it's got a lot of zeros because we have, uh, we have a significantly smaller sample size. So if I wanted to, I could go in and manually change some of these zeros. So if I think that I should be getting an A followed by an E. I can go in and manually adjust that. I can make that a, let's make a small number. So each of these is about a third. So let's make each of these um, about a, a 0.001 or something like that. Now that unnormalizes it, but back in my um, name generator, I believe we normalize it initially, don't we? Normalize. Yeah, so after we open the file, we do normalize it, just in case it hasn't been normalized yet. So I'm free to make edits to this as I need to. Um, I think A should be able to follow, be followed by an M. So let's put that a small one. And I'm making it a small number so that it's not rocking the boat too much. Um, but this is just to show you that, that this can still work. Um, 17, we didn't have, do did we have any Qs? Sure, yeah, we had some Qs. Yeah, they were always followed by a U. So Gripply obey that rule, unlike the elves. And we didn't have any X's, Y's, or Z's. So they came out uniform, one over 26 everywhere. So that's something we're gonna have to take care of in the feedback portion. So we're gonna hit save. And so when I run, oh yeah, I need to exit this so that it can write over the file. So now when I run my, my name generator, I wanna be able to give it feedback. So everything in this generator is the same as in the last video, but I've added a piece at the end. So for example, down here, um, after it prints the name, so the previous code ended here, it gives me a question. It asks me, was this a good race name name? So the race name here is just so we only have to set the race name once. Um, let's go up to the top and set that to Gripply. I was testing this out with elves yesterday. 
Now we'll make that Gripply. So now when we want to access the probability matrix file, it's going to access Gripply.csv. When we want to open the, uh, when we want to ask it, was this a good Gripply name? We just have Gripply right here. And so here we're using the input function to get input from the user. So it's printed the name, and now the computer's gonna ask, was this a good Gripply name, yes or no? And if the user responds yes, then it's going to adjust the probability matrix favorably. It's gonna go down the list of permutations in that name, and it's going to increase each of those permutations, each entry in the, um, in the matrix, uh, entry in that name, uh, each of these pairs, I followed by J, I followed by I plus one, to be 1.01. So it's gonna be, it's gonna increase it by 1%. But if it's a bad name, if it doesn't work, if we say, no, I didn't like that name, that's not what I want my Gripply name to sound like, then we're gonna decrease that probability by 1%. And so this is incredibly useful if you've got a small sample size of names to work with that you can adjust the probability matrix as you go. It's also useful if you're creating your own set of names or creating your own language that you can give the computer feedback and then it adjusts the probability matrix accordingly. And so it normalizes the probability matrix with its new values and then it writes that probability matrix so that the next time you run it, you're using your updated version. So let's run this, let's give this a, a few tries. Um, Mrupzu, uh, you know, I, I, I like the upzu part, but I don't like the mura. I would like to decrease the probability of M followed by R occurring. So I'm gonna tell the program, no, that was not a good Gripply name. Now this is where we have a little bit of a trade-off because I like upzu. But, and so I'm, I'm decreasing those values, but the one I only, the really the only one I wanted to de decrease was the MR. So that's why this is going to take a little while to, to get a good probability matrix. Quan, that is a great name. In fact, I think that's one of the default names, isn't it? Yeah, Quan right there. So we already picked up. I guess that makes sense because you've only got a few Qs occurring. So when it picks a Q, it's gonna go on to those. So we're going to kind of artificially inflate that there. Um, Let's see, let's try that again. Wow, Vomvigu. You know what, I'm gonna say a yes to that. Uh, let's try again. Mulelum, oh, that sounds like a wonderful Gripply name. Here we go. They've got Whoopwo, was that? <laughs> that sounds like a Gripply who's always like getting into trouble or making mistakes. Whoopwo, um, was that on the list? I, no, that wasn't on the list. So yeah, so we're, we're, we're working out pretty well here. Yes, that's a good Gripply name. Um, so what I'm gonna do is run this a, a few dozen times. I'll, I'll speed it up in editing, and then we'll take a look at the probability matrix and get it, kind of get a view of how that has changed. Okay, so I've run this a bunch. Um, I feel like I'm giving more yeses than noes, so that's a good thing. Let's take a look at the updated CSV file and see how the probability matrix has changed. So we've got a little bit different probability matrix. Um, the ones I added in, the E, the AE and AM, have uh, decreased a little bit. Um, and these have increased a little bit. So these were a little bit more favorable than AE and AM. So I'm, I'm happy to be wrong about uh, putting those in. Um, if I come down here, I've got a 100% on this. I didn't notice that one before. It says A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. So we've always got a, an A after K. So that might be one to edit uh, for later. Um, if I come down to my, where was Q? I think Q is, yeah, Q is still followed by a U. Um, my Z has changed a little bit. I had a few Zs come up. Um, so Z followed by E uh, went down a little bit. Um, so that one was 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 found in, a, in an unfavorable name. I guess it was the, yeah, this one, this one ended up being a little bit lower, Z followed by U. So Z seem to not be terribly favorable. So I think my next step is gonna be to influence the, uh, probability of selecting a starting letter to begin with. Um, actually, let's check out, what's the probability of ending up with a Z over here? Okay, so it's possible to get a Z after some of these letters. Okay, okay, yeah, some of these were, were uniform. So like, I don't think we had any Ds in the initial set of names. Do we have any Ds? 
Oh, no, no, we didn't have any Ds there. So, yeah, so the only way we got a Z was off of anything that didn't occur in a Gripply name to begin with. Um, so, like I said, you can do this with any set of names that you want to start with. Um, obviously, the, lo the larger your set of names that you start with, the better. But as you use this program and as you give it feedback, uh, it becomes better at giving you uh, a name that sounds like the type of name that you want. And that's the whole idea behind machine learning is that the program gets better at its job based on the feedback that you give it. So I'm going to continue to play around with this program. I'll, I'll post updates as I have them. Uh, I think this is pretty fun. I'm going to use this uh, in my own uh, 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 RPG prep and fantasy writing and everything. Um, so please feel free to download this if you find you need to make some changes to it or, or find a way to make it work better for you. I'd love to find out in the comments below or on Twitter at Let's Code Physics. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.